By 1999, video games were rounding in to present day form. 3D graphics were becoming more polished and cutscenes even had voiceovers. One video game that exemplified all that was good from this era was Driver. Developed by Reflections Interactive and published by GT Interactive Software, Driver was released in 1999 for the PlayStation. Tonight on the Tiger Chainsaw Show, I am reviewing Driver. My guest tonight is series writer Maurice Suckling, and he stops by to discuss how he helped create Driver and the plot to it. He also discloses a major plot change that Walmart forced them to do in order to get Driver on their shelves. And you will not want to miss this. Do I have any metalheads in the crowd tonight? You? Yeah? All right. Yes. Well, your ears are going to be bleeding after the incredible performance by Jernza. Jernza hails from Battle Creek, Michigan, and they are debuting their incredible music video for Sacred Sights. Jernza is a self-described death metal melodic band that is inspired by aliens and folk metal. I cannot wait to show you guys this incredible music video that was shot entirely on VHS. Jernza is a true artist in every sense of the word. So, I'm gonna take a break, but on the flip side, let's get this show rolling. We need a driver. We've heard a lot about you. You any good. Get in. Welcome back to the Tiger Chainsaw Show. In 1999, Driver was released for the PlayStation, giving you the promise that you are the wheel man. But what's Driver all about? Is it a cop drama? Is it a story about a criminal organization? Well, let's hop behind the wheel and find out for ourselves, but be warned, spoilers are ahead. You're an undercover cop named Tanner, who is an ex-race car driver, so naturally, you're great behind the wheel. Tanner gets informed by his police chief that he is going undercover to become a wheelman and infiltrate a dangerous gang. Tanner heads to Miami and begins working through a pimp named Rufus. At first, Tanner does errands and is the getaway driver for various crimes, but eventually, he helps bust out one of the gang leaders named Gene Paul. Rufus, in the meantime, gets popped by his girlfriend and Gene Paul moves to San Francisco where Tanner follows. Tanner begins working for Gene Paul's boss, who is named Castaldi. Now, Castaldi is working for a politician named Don Hancock, who is running to become the President of the United States. After tying up business in San Francisco, the crew moves to Los Angeles where they plan to assassinate an FBI agent. As Tanner is feeding info to the police, he begins to worry that the gang suspects him as an informant. The hit on the FBI agent is unsuccessful and Tanner drives the gang away from all the chaos and they decide to relocate to New York. Tanner learns that Hancock has begun bribing FBI officials and that every day, Tanner's cover is closer to being blown. In the final mission, Castaldi and Hancock have planned to assassinate the President of the United States, where Tanner will be his driver. In the end, Tanner drives the President to safety, ignoring all orders. But when the police and the FBI come to rescue the President, Tanner is weary of who is working for the mob and who is working for the FBI, including his own police chief. Tanner drives off and it's unclear 
whether he's still on the force as the credits roll. Now that you know the intricate plot to Driver that includes undercover police and mobsters, let's take a look at the gameplay. What makes Driver so special and how does it separate itself from games from that era? Well, let's take a look at the gameplay, but first, let's take a commercial break. But on the flip side, we're taking a look at what makes Driver special. Stay tuned. Ronald, I think I have a rock in my shoe. Hmm, let me see. I am hungry. <gasps> yep, there was a rock. <laughs> Witches, Draculas, space aliens. They're showing up at McDonald's for frightfully fun Halloween tales. One comes with each happy meal you buy. Wow, great costumes. What costumes? Did somebody say McDonald's? Welcome back to the Tiger Chainsaw Show. Driver is a perfect example of a passion project done right. You can feel the love and attention to detail that went into creating this incredible game. And it all starts with the presentation on the main menu. Games today always have the same type of menu. New game, continue, options. Boring. Driver's menu is tailored to the game. It's not just some boring backdrop. It has character. It has mini games, cheats, and it even has an option just to drive around, which you better believe I took advantage of many times. It was fun just to explore and see where I could drive the car or hone my driving skills. This is what I miss about games. You know, it's a video game. Games today take themselves too seriously. And I know, I sound like an old man yelling at a cloud, but part of the reason I enjoy video games is that they aren't real. Driver doesn't take itself too seriously, and you understand that right from the beautiful menu because there's even an entire section just for cheats. The menu is top notch, but so is the preview video which is another lost art of video games. You see, when you used to wait a minute at main menus, a video would play that would sort of hype up the game. I don't think many games do that anymore, but let's go ahead and watch the preview video the driver gives us.
world of Driver feels like a real world. It feels lived in with its interesting characters and busy city life. Your missions will occur in Miami, Los Angeles, New York, and San Francisco. Each city is different from its structures and cars. It does a great job in making you believe that you are in unique areas. You'll also get a new car in every city, so get used to driving it while you're in town. The biggest complaint that I hear is how tough the tutorial stage is, which is essentially the first mission. Tanner needs to impress some thugs into letting him be the wheel man, so he takes them to a parking garage where he needs to do things like 180s, slamming on the brakes, and zooming in and out of pillars. I remember playing it and beating it maybe after my third attempt, and that was as a kid. So it's really not as difficult as people make it seem out to be. But I did hear that it really did traumatize some people. Oh, there's a parking garage. No, I'm pretty sure that one's full. Well, how about this one? No, I'm pretty sure you have to pay money for this one. No, you don't. I think it's free. No, no, let's just keep going. Okay, then this one. No, 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 car won't fit. We gotta keep going. What do you mean the car won't I fit? I said it won't fit. Hey, this is literally the last parking garage. No, I can't do it. It's too hard. Why not? What is your deal with parking garages? You just wouldn't understand. Not only are you treated to cutscenes after completing a mission, but in between missions, you can take a break by returning to your hotel room. This little hub is where you can save your game, take a ride, or select your next mission by listening to your answering machine, which is filled with job offers. Now that brings up another thing that makes Driver so great. It has replay value. If you skip one mission during your first run, you can select it on the second run. One thing that had me laughing almost uncontrollably was the messages on the answering machine from the wrong callers. Sometimes you'd get a message from a Chinese delivery man and his accent was hilarious. <laughs> The attention to detail with the answering machine is something that really made Driver come to life. And it's something that people that lived in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s will only understand. Here's my one complaint with Driver. I recently replayed it for the first time in almost 15 years. As a kid, I could never beat it, but I could get pretty far. As an adult, I had no problem cruising to the end mission. There's only one mission that I failed on the first attempt. The rest, I was able to complete on the first try. But the final mission is almost impossible to beat. The difficulty ramps up so extreme that I was shocked when I was playing it. I must have replayed the final mission close to 50 times. Think about that. That's so many different restarts. In fact, the poor PS1 from my childhood that I've had for over 20 years actually froze on two different occasions. I will admit that I didn't properly beat the final mission. I used a cheat code to become invincible to beat it. But what could I do? After 50 plus attempts, I was fed up with how unfair that mission was. The final mission has you taking the President of the United States into a parking garage of all places, while the Secret Service and police chase you. You have to be perfect to beat this level, and I came so close on numerous attempts only to be crushed by the police with the end goal just a few feet away. Driver is a superb video game in almost every sense. And coming up after the break, it is my absolute pleasure to welcome Marie Suckling to the Tiger Chainsaw Show. 
Maurice is the Driver Series writer, and he will be sharing insight into how he helped create Driver. So stay tuned because you are not going to want to miss his memories. families everywhere. Grande Meals, new from Taco Bell. Start with any combination of 10 tacos or bean burritos, but that's not all. We'll add a Nachos Bell Grande and to top it off, a Mexican pizza, all for just $9.99. Grande Meals, pick one up tonight. Loco Grande. Welcome back to the Tiger Chainsaw Show. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome my next guest on the Tiger Chainsaw Show, Marie Suckling. Writing video game plots is no easy task, especially when it's your very first video game. But that is exactly what Maurice did when he joined his pals at Reflections Interactive. Everybody, please give Maurice a round of applause as he joins us on the Tiger Chainsaw Show. Maurice, thank you so much for joining us today. It is an absolute pleasure of mine. I love Driver and I'm really excited to discuss the game with you. I want to ask you, how did you get involved in this project and what were you doing before you decide to start writing video games? So Gareth Edmondson is the short answer to the first part of that question. So Gareth was... Uh, a friend of mine at university, we were both at university together, at Bristol University. Gareth went off to go be a civil engineer. And after a few years of, of that career, he jumped careers to join his brother, Martin Edmondson. So Martin had a, a video game company. They uh, had, that company was called Reflections and they'd already made some successful games. Shadow of the Beast was, was one, and, and more recently in this timeline, they'd made Destruction Derby. And they were working on this new game, Driver, and they were handling storytelling, which they'd never really had to do in any of their previous games, at least not to, to this extent. And I think I was the only writer that he <laughs> that he knew. He was like, well, I don't know what to do with this. So how did you begin to write the story for Driver? Was there any inspiration? And were there any major changes or shifts in plot during the production of Driver? I, I think that Martin was, was still, uh, he was inspired by things like the 1970s TV shows that he grew up with, with Starsky and Hutch and so on. And, um, in particular, he liked Ryan O'Neill's movie, The Driver. So, so they had these ideas in mind that they would do something of of that of that nature. But, like I said, they hadn't really worked with story before. And, and frankly, at this time, the late '90s, not many people had done lots of work in stories in in video games in this kind of way. This was not a you know, there, there was some lineage for sure in, in terms of people writing fantasy stories, adventure stories with uh, with video games. But this felt like something that people hadn't really taken on before. Anyway, uh, Gareth, um, full of uh, practicality, has ever said, "Okay." Um, <laughs> he, like I said, he hired me for two weeks, and his his brief was basically, "Can you just throw a story at this?" <laughs> so. Uh, you know, I, I just kind of looked at, uh, I basically was shown a tech demo, shown, okay, so here's cars and they can move and you can um, watch the Ryan and Neil movie, which I hadn't seen before, and, and just try and understand what kind of tone Martin had in mind when I think the guys came back from a meeting they'd had in the States to say that, well, Walmart's wouldn't carry the the game if he was a getaway driver. That meant that well, he, so he got to be an undercover cop, which which seems kind of logical enough and and makes 
enough sense that you could walk out of that meeting going, okay, well, I guess that's what we'll do. But, but certainly that was uh, <laughs> that was a problem for me. Um, it would cause a huge dent in the prospective sales if Walmart wouldn't carry it. Uh, they were just such a big retailer, and the U.S. market was was the primary market where that game was expected to to sell. So it was really no question. So as much as someone like me might gripe about it and say, "Oh, <laughs> that's a shame. It doesn't make the story as good or as interesting." And you know, it's the same for Martin and Gareth. They weren't fans of that that decision either. But it really there was really no decision to make. It just well, just make it work, however best you can, because. There's too much writing on this, and it just has to. It it just has to allow the content to to function. When you look back at your time helping create Driver, what's one thing that really stands out to you? What's one memory that you'll never forget during that era? It could be something funny. It could be something serious. When you think of Driver. What's that one thing that will always stay with you? There was, so I used to work, um, my hours became about 11 a.m. in the morning to about 4 a.m. in the morning. So I would spend some of that time with people. Some people would work late, but I would get lots of work done, you know, in those, in those early, early hours. And I used to uh, take a cab back from the office to where I was was staying and one night uh, this cab driver swerved out of the way of something I don't know don't know what it was and um, took a moment to, to control the car and I remember just thinking how no one knew where my documents were they didn't know how everything fitted together this stuff was all in word documents that uh, I had <laughs> saved on a on a thumb drive, and that you know, just no one knew it. So I remember thinking how the game would be delayed if anything happened to me. And I, I, I had to. So the next day, I, I wrote a long email to Gareth to explain here's where all my work is, but here's how everything fits together. This mission leads to this mission, and this connects to that. And then if player does this, then this is going to happen. And so that all these kinds of things that just meant that I realized no one else knows, no one is just, everyone is so busy trying to get their stuff done that I'd never have a producer come and say, just checking in, can you check this stuff into Perfor so you could check this stuff into, you know, we didn't have Google Docs or anything, anything like that. So everything was so separate and, and everyone was so rushed and just trying to make this thing work that, yeah, I just really, I just remember getting a real shock. <laughs> need to explain this to someone so that people can still build the game. I cannot thank you enough, Maurice, for joining us on the Tiger Chainsaw Show tonight. But before you go, I have to ask you, what are you up to now? Are you still in the video game industry or are you doing other things? Um, I'll, I'll try to answer that all, all the same. So I still work in, in video games, but less. So I used to be doing that all the time. And now I do that part time with doing other things uh, as well. So quite often when I do work in video games, it's more as a consultant now or doing some additional writing. So recent projects have included uh, so Fortnite, which obviously lots of people know. I just did a bit of narrative consultancy for them a couple of years ago and I was involved in a game called Beyond the Page, uh, Lost Words Beyond the Page. Well, a few years, a few years ago, I was, um, so I was a narrative director at 2K Australia where we made Borderlands, the pre-sequel, which was one of my favorite games that I've worked on. So yeah, still making lots of games. I mean, now I, I my full-time job is an assistant professor at Wensleyer Polytechnic Institute, which is also upstate New York, where I teach and research. My, my specialties are, as you might expect, storytelling in games and also historical simulations. So that's what I, I do, but I've been able to take lots of that 
experience from the last 20 odd years and kind of filter it through my uh, work at the university. Maurice, again, I can't thank you enough. It's been an absolute pleasure hearing your thoughts and memories of helping create Driver and sharing some amazing tidbits of info like Walmart forcing you guys to shift the entire plot of Driver just for them to sell it on their shelves. So Maurice, thank you from all of us. Coming up on the Tiger Chainsaw Show, Cherry Noble is gonna stop by and she's gonna play a mission in Driver. We'll get her thoughts after the break. Stay tuned. This ride's for big kids. I got a big kids meal from Burger King. What's that? It's got more food. Why's it got more food? Big kids need more food. The tasty new Burger King Big Kids Meal with more fun food, like six-piece chicken tenders with gooey apple green slime dipping sauce. You must be a big kid. Next. So this is your splat calculator? Your rocket pen? Yes, sir. Then there's one more question. Where can I get them? Right now, every delicious Burger King Big Kids meal you buy comes with a back-to-school supply, like the Message Center. You can collect all five. Taste rules. Hi, I'm Cherry Noble, and I'm going to be playing Driver. Okay, well, that's that. I don't know why it's still letting me play. Okay, there we go. Try again. Off to a good start. I don't know how to back up. Okay. I don't know where he went. <laughs> Okay, um, I mean, I would give it a thumbs up even though I suck at it. I will say the controls suck though, so I don't like that. Um, but overall, it was still fun to play. Um, coming up, Tiger Chainsaw is going to give you his score of the game. Scientists announced today the discovery of a new element. The discovery of a new element. They're calling it turbonium. The turbonium is unique. The addition of turbonium to the periodic table of elements was elements. It's electrons traveling at a rate of speed. In la física cuántica. But practical applications are still. Turbonium. 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 Back to you, John. All right. You guys ready to take a trip down memory lane? Driver was the third game that I ever got for my PS1. 
One night, my dad and I went to Meyer. Now, for those who are not in the Midwest, Meyer is a supermarket store similar to Walmart. So my dad bought it for me, and all I could think of was playing this game on the way home. I grew up in a town of a little over 2,000 people, so if we went to the store, we drove about a half an hour to go to it. As a 10-year-old kid sitting in the car waiting to get home, it seemed like an eternity. Once we got home, that eternity grew longer because my oldest sister was using the TV to watch the movie The Bodyguard. I'll never forget it. So I'll forever associate that movie with Driver, as I had to wait another 45 minutes for it to end before kicking my sister out so I could use the PlayStation for 10 minutes before I had to go to bed. I have so many fond memories of playing Driver as a kid. Now I could never beat it, and I guess technically I still can't because I had to use cheat codes, but Driver will always be special to me. So, what is my final score for Driver? Well, let's cue up that scorecard. Hold it! Now, before I reveal my score for this game, let me show you my grading system so you better understand my score. First off, this is my score, my personal assessment of the game. You may have a different opinion. You may love this game. You may hate it. That's okay. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, nine to 10, these are must own games. These are the games that everyone should have in their library and just about everyone can appreciate or enjoy them. These are the crown jewels of video games. Eight to nine, these are great games. Games that everyone should at least play. These are experiences that are very enjoyable and many will find these games to be superb. Seven to eight, these games are good. Most of these games are worth trying out and seeing if you enjoy them. There may be a few small complaints about the game, but for the most part, gamers should try them. Six to seven, these games are solid, but may have some unpleasant elements to them as far as glitches, poor gameplay sections, or terrible plots. These may also be niche games that don't appeal to the mass audience that may only be worth your time if you're a huge fan of that genre. Five to six. Now we're getting to some very average games. If you feel like taking a risk, you may find some enjoyment in these, but overall, your time is best spent playing something else. Zero to five. These games stink. Very few people will find enjoyment and fun. These games have been wrecked with poor design, terrible plots, and game-breaking glitches. Stay away from these games. This game is the complete package, a near-perfect experience for the original PlayStation. Amazing gameplay, immense attention to detail, a fresh story, and addicting minigames made Driver a must-have. The controls are a little rough today, but I still loved replaying it. I highly recommend playing it if you haven't. So what's my review score for Driver? I'm giving Driver a 9.7 out of 10. But that's just my opinion, and I want to hear from all of you. What's your own experience with Driver? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? What are your memories of Driver, and were you ever able to beat the final mission without cheating? Or were you ever able to beat the first mission? Let me know in the comments below, and good lord, while you're there, feed this guy, because he is always hungry for some new subs. Because when you sub to my channel, you can catch new episodes of the Tiger Chainsaw Show. I want to thank Maurice Suckling for stopping by and sharing his insight into the creation of Driver. And yes, I do want to thank Cherry Noble for her incredible playthrough of Driver. I may be done, but we're not done. 
because Jernza is about to melt your brain along with mine with their incredible hit song, Sacred Sights. I am so proud to present their music video because like I said before, it is shot entirely on VHS. So everybody, please welcome Jernza to the Tiger Chainsaw Show. And if you like what you hear, and I know you are, make sure you follow Jernza on all their social media links, which will be in the description below. I'm signing off on the Tiger Chainsaw Show, but Jernza, take it away.